it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms and I'm loaded up for a pretty exciting project today. I've got the carry-all on the front of the tractor and I'm giving that away to the winner of our carry-all giveaway that we did a while back and it's just taken us a little while to schedule it. He's quite a ways away but we're doing it today. And the part of it that really has me excited is number one we're going to do some stump grinding on his property which is always a good time. Number two, he has a bigger tractor than mine, but still in a similar class range. And we're gonna do a direct comparison between my tractor and his. And he has a unique attachment that I'm interested in showing. Anyway, I've got a long drive ahead of me and I'll see you in just a little bit. All right, well, I'm on the road. I've already stopped after driving a little ways and made sure that everything's riding good, that none of the straps are coming loose. GPS shows I'm gonna to get to Josh's house. That's who won the carry-all. I'll get to Josh's house around 11, and that should give us plenty of time to do everything I wanted to do. There's something else I've had on my mind for a little while that I wanted to talk about, and that is how incredibly grateful I am to the people who watch this channel. I put a lot of time and effort into making these videos, hoping that it'll be helpful or entertaining. And every time you guys hit the like button or comment on the videos, I really appreciate it. And there's a lot of people who watch the majority of these videos, and I'm blown away by that, so thank you. But I'd like to connect with some of my audience. If, if you've got a tractor or some attachments or something you think might be interesting to the viewers, and you'd like me to come visit you the way I'm doing today, then I'm gonna put my contact information in the description of the video because I'd love to come visit a couple tractor owners a month and do comparisons between your tractor and mine, pros and cons. You could try my attachments and I can try yours, that sort of thing. And I think it would be very interesting content for the channel I also think, like today, there's a possibility maybe I can help you get some work done and benefit the viewers who have supported me. So, if you're interested in a visit for me, I don't know why you would be, but if you are, I'll have the contact info in the description. Send me a message, tell me what you think. So, anyway, I'll see you out at this job. All right, I'm here with Josh. He's the winner of the carry-all. We've just taken the last hour taking a tour of his property, looking at his tractor, kind of seeing what kind of work we wanted to do today. Beautiful property. Um, and I really think it's gonna be a good comparison between these two tractors. And he's got this four in one bucket that we're gonna compare to a grapple. His is the 3046R tractor, which is what I consider to be the next real step out from a 2038. I think the E-Series and the 3 aren't necessarily a step up, but this 3R should be, so I'm excited to run that. We're gonna try to grind out a stump. We're gonna go pick up some logs. Should be a good time. So I was just showing Josh the features of the carry-all. If you haven't seen it, I have three videos on the process of purchasing the frame all the way up to finishing it out. I'd like to see how a T-post would go across this. Set across it. Oh, that'd be perfect for hauling. You could probably, you could strap from here to the top and you could bundle T-posts on the top of this when you, and put your barbed wire underneath yeah. so when you're working on it. And the nice thing about the hitch, you can hook up a, a reel for your barbed wire to roll it out so you could just pull it through your field. Yeah. So I really, for, you could have this built, if you follow your steps on your videos, you could probably have this built in what, three hours, four hours, and you might be yeah. out 120 bucks. So. And so for me, the cost was that lumber was through the roof. Right. I paid twice as much, okay. but as soon as this calms down, a lot of guys have built this frame for $100, and then you got like 200 in the actual metal part, but. Have you seen, I've seen most of the carryalls that you see out there that they used to sell. It was usually just six, two by sixes flat on the bottom, and that's all you've got. So this is by far a, a lot handier setup. So I had this, the strap on it to keep it closed. Now, the tailgate keeps it from closing too far. Uh, this lifts out, flips upside down, so you've got an area to work on. 
So should be useful for a lot of things. Most people use them for firewood, but it's not limited to that. So yeah. Overall though, you think it's something you're gonna be able to use? Oh, I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna start using it this evening. If we don't get rained out, if we don't get rained out, if we don't get rained out. Josh has a stump here that he loves mowing around. And I said, I don't care how much you like it. We're gonna take it out. Get it gone. <laughs> I don't remember where the last place I used the stump grinder was, but it must have been muddy because there was a ton of dirt packed up around the cutting wheel. I did the first two or three passes and then just let Josh take over and finish grinding out this stump. This is a 20% chance of rain. If you've ever wondered what 20% is, this is 20%. All right, well, like I said, it was a 20% chance of rain and it turned into a 100% chance of rain, but it only lasted a couple hours. So we're gonna get back to grinding out this stump. Then we'll go uh, play a little bit, moving some logs and stuff. I've got at least five and maybe as many as ten videos on my channel showing you how to grind stumps with this Bombalite stump grinder. So we're going to cut to the end of that. And if you want to watch stump grinding, check one of those other videos. so Josh just ground out that stump I thought he did an excellent job I normally kill the tractor a couple times on a stump like that and he didn't kill it so he's doing something right but we don't have any special allegiance to bombalite here so what are your honest opinions on using this um, I think it's it's a good stump grinder I feel if it was on a bigger tractor uh, it, I think it would do a little better but I don't like how you can only cut from one side, which I don't know if that's typical of all stump grinders. Um, but it seemed to me the big ones have alternating teeth on both sides and they have a, a strip of teeth down the middle. So I think tooth placement, which I'm sure there's a reason why they did it the way they did, but uh, I feel that that could be better. Uh, safety wise, I felt good about it. Um, safety, as far as being up away from it and it not throwing stuff back at me. So all in all, I think it's a pretty neat stump grinder. Yeah, I think the only time you'll ever see a grinding wheel with only having teeth on one side is on one of these tractor mounted stump grinders. I think it compares favorably to other brands in the build quality. I think it compares favorably to a fixed mounted instead of the, the articulating style. But this will never compare to a commercial stump grinder. It just doesn't have the, the power, especially on this tractor. But I saw some really cool things about this 
four in one bucket. I kind of thought four in one bucket seemed gimmicky because maybe it wasn't a good bucket and it wasn't a good grapple and it's trying to be both. And my initial thoughts on this is that I'm pretty impressed for a couple things. Number one, it looked like to me you can back drag without having your cylinders fully extended, which they say the easiest way to bend your cylinders is to back drag with them extended. Also, that he can um, grip and clamp tighter in that groove than I can with any grapple. Um, so there's a few things just looking at this so far that are impressive to me. I'm not sure how it would do if you had a big brush pile, but we might find something like that and, and play around a little bit. But do um, you have anything else you want to say about the, the pros and cons of the four in one? So I feel that the four in one does great with, uh, like it says, a four in one. It does a lot of different things. So I'm not having to take it on and off to pick up brush. I'm not having to take it on and off to pick up a scoop of gravel. Uh, the back dragging feature is phenomenal. The, uh, the feel for it to where you can find where it's level at to me is a lot better than um, when it with a normal bucket. I don't know if that's how it's built or how it's made. Um, but I, I've been a big fan of it so far. Um, it seems really well built because I've, I've put it through a lot. I've picked up a lot of logs with it. So I'm able to go from picking up logs to smoothing out the gravel that they were laying on in the brush pile and cleaning up the ashes and the rocks and whatnot. And you can pinpoint saplings with this thing and pull them out with the roots and all. You can pinpoint cedar trees really easily because you can you can bite this corner of the cedar trees and push and pull until those uh, roots separate from the ground. So all in all, I'm really pleased with it. I'm more happy with this than I would be with uh, a, a grapple and a bucket. So all in all, I'd highly recommend it if you've got a, a, comp, a subcompact tractor. Yeah, I've kind of got everything I need and something is still telling me I need this. I don't know how I'm going to convince myself to justify the purchase, but... Um, Anyway, we'll take this out and try it in a few different places, so let's get going. All right, I'm gonna try to get some drone footage down here because this is a beautiful property, but it's 40 acres, it's massive hills, and it's got streams all over it. And I mean, I think it's great out here, but maintenance is ridiculous. So what was your plan to keep this down? So we're gonna fence off 25 acres on the place, which will pretty much encapsulate all of our woods, all of our rocks, anything you can't really brush, brush hog safely over. So we plan on putting up uh, goat wire and we're going to run about 25 to 50 heads of uh, Kiko goats. So that's our plan. Several people told me that's a good thing to do and I was a little bit nervous about it because I don't know anything about goats. Me neither. <laughs> might see a goat channel soon. Who knows? But if I looked at trying to maintain this, it's beyond what one person can do. So I think yeah. it's a good plan. We got a big brush pile right here. We're going to see what we can move. Yeah, let's see. Let's go. I'm cheating a little bit because I've got 900 pounds of ballast and he's just got this wimpy little carry-all on the back.
sad stories about the city line and the crazy nights. I figure I should probably give it a try. Maybe check it out, see what it's all about. But the traffic was fast and the money was slow. The people I met you never get to know. I kind of miss this place I used to live back home. Cause up here it's break. Change your mind, trying to save your time. In case you're thinking about breaking out the bucket list, girl, you can skip this funny business. Cause up there it's complicated and overrated. Down here everything is understated. That's alright by me. I got everything that I need. But there is all right, so we just played around on each other's tractors and going to give a little bit of a comparison between the two. You want to start first and just things you notice that are different, better, worse? Um, I really like the cab feature. I've never owned a cab tractor, so that was a big deal for me as far as having a roof over my head, so that's something I might look into. Um, I liked how the, the, the steering seemed more responsive than mine. Mine seems more sloppier. Um, I didn't like the ground clearance. Uh, I wish there was more. I, I feel weird or bad about the stuff that's hanging down. I'm afraid it was going to hit a rock or a brush or anything like that. The self-leveling feature is a game changer. Um, I don't know if I'd use it every day. I mean, I know you would if you had it, but uh, I really think it makes a big difference. Yep. So I do like that. Yep. And on that cab, I think it's phenomenal for the price. Yeah. I think I would never say that's a better cab than the factory cab because it's not. But for the price and the versatility, I think it's pretty great. So what I liked about the grapple uh, versus the four in one, I liked that I could get underneath the brush um, and pick it up and grab it instead of having to hover over it, lean down and grab it. I did like that. I felt that the biting pressure was lacking because um, this, you can pick up logs, sticks as big as three inches and it will clasp it and hold it. That, if you got anything really small, it kind of, teetered out but all in all I'm very impressed with it as well as far as the four-in-one bucket after using it I don't think it's a hundred percent as good as a grapple but when you're talking about the cost of a grapple I could really see that being a good all-in-one solution he you use your tractor quite a bit and mm -hmm. you said you've never taken that off right and that's a testament to kind of the versatility I think it's better than a regular bucket for sure as far as back dragging I think it'd be great for ripping out I can't grab the saplings with this and rip it out. There, there's nowhere that it pinches. Right. So I think it's nice. I felt a little less stable on his tractor. I didn't know if that's real or feel because I'm up higher. Um, it felt more tippy. Another part of that is we didn't have very much ballast on it. I usually carry a full ballast. I think he usually carries a full ballast. The uh, carry all is not that heavy. We'd have to put something heavy in it if we really wanted to move those logs. Otherwise, there's little things that you can find in uh, the pamphlet from the dealership, but for the most part, I could the biggest difference I could tell on this tractor is that you know that extra eight horsepower is there because that extra horsepower is going to a bigger wheel, and if you want to push something, um, it just doesn't slip as quick as mine does. So I kind of said that we're going to compare these tractors. I think they're both great tractors. Um, they, they definitely have a place. This one is a little bit smaller to fit in tighter places. This one's got more power and this one costs a little more. So it's always just picking what's the most important to you. But I really had a good time today. I had a fantastic time. So I appreciate you having yep. me. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you watching this video. In just a minute, you'll see links on the screen to a couple more of our videos and we'll see you next time. See you guys. <laughs>